ever lay awake at night and like wonder what's it all about you know that whole meaning of life thing yeah well get ready to dive into some pretty fascinating ideas because today we're looking at martinez yeah he's got some radical takes on death and the self and why those two things might not be as opposed as we tend to think right we've got excerpts from three of his works okay the eye the spirit and the body mm -hmm. the eye in its own world and the eye at one with eternity. Okay. And let me tell you, these aren't your average self-help books. Right. What if I told you death could be a kind of pleasure? Okay. I know it sounds wild, right? Yeah. But that's exactly what Martina suggests. It's not about seeking out death, of course. Right. But more about reframing how we see it. Okay. You see, Martinez believed there's this huge difference in mm. between your physical body yeah. and the I that experiences life. Okay, so like my body is temporary. Right. But my I, that sense of self is actually eternal. Yeah. That's a pretty big leap. It is. Yeah. But think of it this way. Your body is like a car. Okay. It gets you around, it needs maintenance. Right. And eventually it wears out. Right. But you, you're the driver. Okay. The car's fate doesn't determine yours. So I'm not just this collection of cells and organs. Right. There's a deeper me running the show. Exactly. <laughs> and that me, according to Martinez, has a structure. Okay. A spiritual one he called the super consciousness. Okay. Imagine it like your own personal operating system, mm -hmm. but for your soul. Okay. It's what allows you to experience consciousness, thought, even memory beyond the physical brain. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I've definitely had moments where I'm like, who's doing the thinking here? It's right. like there's this deeper level of awareness observing my thoughts. Exactly. And Martinez, he gives the example of saying, I saw or I walked. Right. There's an I that's more than just the act of seeing or walking. Right. And that I is constantly evolving, learning, and growing. Okay. Through its experiences. So my life with all its like joys and challenges. Yes. Is shaping that inner eye. Exactly. Okay. So even if my physical body kicks the bucket, that inner eye, that super consciousness keeps going. Hold on. Are we talking reincarnation here? We are. Martinez saw it as a natural progression. Mm -hmm. The experiences we have in this life, our actions, even our thoughts, they all contribute to this ongoing evolution of the eye. It's like carrying over lessons learned from one grade to the next. Whoa, okay. So if my choices now are impacting my future selves and future lives, that kind of ups the ante on making good decisions. But how much does this life really affect the next one? Like if I scarf down that extra slice of pizza, will my future self be paying the price? Maybe not in terms of extra pounds. Okay. But Martinez believed there are consequences to neglecting our inner world. Okay. And that includes our physical health. So it's not just about avoiding cosmic indigestion. Right. But like recognizing there's this deeper connection between my actions in this life mm -hmm. and my well-being in future ones. Exactly. Martinez believed that just as we strive for harmony in our relationships with others, we should also strive for harmony within ourselves. That means paying attention to our thoughts, our emotions, yeah, it, even our physical health. Right. It's all it's, connected. It's like that saying, you are what you eat. But on a much deeper level, right. it's not just about physical health. It's about spiritual and mental well-being, too. Yeah. If we're constantly feeding ourselves negativity, whether it's junk food or negative thoughts, it's going to have a ripple effect. Mm. And that ripple effect, according to Martinez, can extend beyond this lifetime. Okay. He believed that disharmony in this life can create disharmony in future lives. Okay, so how do we create more harmony? If I'm constantly bombarded with stress and deadlines... How can I possibly find inner peace, let alone worry about my future selves? Well, it starts with awareness. Okay. By simply paying attention to our thoughts and actions, mm -hmm. we can start to make different choices. Uh. Martinez called this conscious living. It's about recognizing that we have the power to choose how we respond to life's challenges. So instead of letting stress control me, uh. I can choose to respond in a way that promotes peace and well-being. Exactly. Easier said than done right. It takes practice, yeah. but even small changes can make a big difference. Right. Martinez was a big advocate for spending time in nature, for example. Yeah. He believed that connecting with the natural world could help us reconnect with our own inner nature. Okay. With that eternal eye that's always present. I can definitely see how being in nature can be calming and grounding. It kind of helps you put things in perspective. And it's not just about finding moments of peace in a hectic world. Mm -hmm. Martinez believed that 
as we become more conscious of our own inner world, we also become more conscious of our interconnectedness with all things. Okay. We start to see the world and everyone in it, not as separate from ourselves, but as part of this grand interconnected web of being. So by cultivating inner harmony, we're not just benefiting ourselves, but also contributing to a more harmonious world. Precisely. Yeah. It's a beautiful ripple effect. Yeah. And it all starts with recognizing that eternal I within that spark of consciousness that connects us all. This is all incredibly fascinating, but I have to admit, the idea that my eye is eternal, constantly evolving, it's a bit daunting. Right. <laughs> what if I don't always make the right choices? Mm -hmm. What if I mess up my cosmic evolution? Well, Martinez wouldn't say there are right or wrong choices per se. Okay. It's all part of the journey. Right, Remember, yeah. your eye is constantly learning and growing. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. So it's less about judging myself for my mistakes and more about learning from them and moving forward. Exactly. Every experience, every challenge, every joy, mm -hmm. it's all contributing to the evolution of your eye. That's actually quite liberating. It takes the pressure off needing to have it all figure out. And it opens up a world of possibilities. Yeah. If we can release that fear of making mistakes and embrace the journey with curiosity and a willingness to learn, imagine what we can achieve. It's like we're all works in progress, but with infinite potential. Mm -hmm. But if we're always evolving, always growing, what does that even mean for having a purpose in this life? Right. If we're not meant to be a finished product, then what are we striving for? That's where things get really interesting. Remember that super consciousness we talked about earlier? Yeah. Martinez believed that this spiritual structure isn't static. Okay. It's constantly expanding, becoming more aware more compassionate, more connected to the universe as a whole. So our purpose isn't a fixed destination, right. but rather this ongoing journey of expanding our consciousness. Exactly. And that expansion can take many forms. Okay. It could be through acts of kindness, through creative expression, through simply being present in each moment and appreciating the beauty of existence. So instead of asking, what's my purpose? Maybe the question is more about how can I live in a way that allows my consciousness to expand? How can I contribute to the evolution of not just myself, but the universe as a whole? Now you're getting it. It's about recognizing that we're not just individual drops in a vast ocean, right. but rather integral parts of the ocean itself. Mm -hmm. And just like every drop of water contributes to the ocean's vastness, mm -hmm. so too does every act of consciousness contribute to the evolution of the universe. Wow, that's a pretty mind-blowing concept. All right. It makes you think about the potential impact of even our smallest actions. And it highlights the importance of living consciously, compassionately, and with a sense of wonder. Yeah. Because according to Martinez, the journey of evolution is not just about individual growth, but about the evolution of the entire cosmos. Okay, I am definitely going to need a minute to process all of this. Sure. But before we get too lost in the cosmos, there was something you mentioned earlier that I wanted to circle back to. Okay. You said that Martinez believed in treating our inner world with the same care and respect that we would treat our fellow humans. Can you elaborate on that a bit more? What exactly did he mean by that? That's a great question. And it leads us to one of Martinez's most fascinating concepts. <laughs> yeah. The idea of the microcosmos that exists within each of us. The microcosmos. Okay, I'm intrigued. Tell me more. Think about all the trillions of microorganisms that live within your body right now. Right. They make up your gut microbiome influence your immune system, and even impact your mood. You're totally right. I do think about that, especially when I'm trying to decide if that extra slice of pizza is a good idea or not. Well, Martinez takes it a step further. Okay. He argues that just as we strive to treat our fellow humans with respect and compassion, we should extend that same consideration to the micro beings that inhabit our bodies. It's like realizing that our bodies are entire universes unto themselves, teeming with life that we rely on for our very existence. It's kind of humbling when you think about it. It is. Right. We often get so caught up in our own little worlds right. that we forget we're part of something much larger, even on a microscopic level. So how does this idea of the microcosmos tie into Martinez's belief that we should treat our inner world with the same care and respect as our outer relationships? 
While Martinez believed that just as our actions towards others create ripples of cause and effect, so too do our actions towards the beings within us. Okay. He wasn't talking about some kind of cosmic punishment for bad digestion. Right. But rather a more subtle kind of influence. So if I'm constantly stressing out or eating junk food, it's not just my physical health that suffers, but also my relationship with my inner microcosmos. And that can have repercussions beyond this lifetime. That's the idea. Martinez believed that neglecting our inner world can create disharmony, not just within our physical bodies, right. but also within our spiritual structure, that super consciousness that's constantly evolving. It's like we're responsible for maintaining the health of our own personal universe. Exactly. And that responsibility, according to Martinez, is an ongoing journey, one that continues long after our physical bodies cease to exist. It makes you wonder about the implications of all this. If our actions have consequences that extend beyond this lifetime and even impact other beings within us, then doesn't that suggest a level of responsibility that goes far beyond what we typically consider? It certainly does. And it challenges us to rethink our place in the grand scheme of things. Mm. Martinez's philosophy isn't about following a set of rules, mm. but rather about cultivating a deep sense of awareness and responsibility for all our actions, both internal and external. It's a lot to consider, but incredibly thought-provoking. This deep dive has definitely given me a whole new perspective on what it means to live a conscious and meaningful life. That's what Martinez hoped to achieve with his writings. He wanted to empower people to see themselves as eternal beings with infinite potential. Right. Capable of creating a more harmonious and compassionate world, both within and without. It's a beautiful vision, and one that I think we can all aspire to, regardless of our individual beliefs. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive into the fascinating world of Martinez. Yeah. We hope this conversation has sparked some new insights and maybe even inspired you to explore his work further. If you're looking for more food for thought, be sure to check out the show notes where we'll have links to all the excerpts we discussed. And hey, if you've had any aha moments during this deep dive, we'd love to hear about them. Yeah, connect with us on social media and share your thoughts. Let's keep this conversation going. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.